Welcome to my YouTube channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Karen Campbell and um, I am an artist, a mom. Um, I run awesomeartschool.com, which is a big, giant, awesome place where you can get free classes as well as an array of um, online courses all about art all the time. I also publish um, How to Draw Fun Fab Faces and I have my second one is totally in the works and it should be out in September so stay tuned for that <clears throat> okay why am I here today I'm here because I want to talk about how to get inspired especially in like the crazy times in your month um, where do you find your inspiration from and it's funny because someone asked me to do this question was you know how do you remain inspired and of course I was thinking I'm always inspired I just have this run of amazing ideas all the time which when my kids are on a reg regular schedule when I've outlined you know my daily plan or I have a project that I need to be done I do have a generally inspiration comes pretty naturally and pretty easy easily to me because I'm a visual creative person anyways but you know it's funny because I was trying to answer this question and then I realized I do. There are times when I need to buckle down and, um, you know, kind of like force the inspiration to come out. And so while I was trying to answer the question, I came up with six tips on how I specifically kind of get my mind going and ready to create a project from like nothing when I am not feeling it at all. Like right now in the summer and my kids are driving me crazy and I'm very stressed and I need to take a minute and whip out a project and here is how I do it. Step one, clean up and be in your space because a clean room is a clean head, I find. So sometimes I realize I'm not going in my studio because it's a hot mess and uh, while I'm a naturally messy person, even the messiest people find, um, you know, it, it's like a creative block, almost physically. I can't even get to my space. I am physically blocked and I can't get there. Then I'm not going to be making any work. So take 15 minutes and clear your space out. Okay. And then you can be clear in the head and you can move forward. Number two, put on some music and try to identify what your mood is. If you're super stressed, Sometimes when I'm super stressed, I'll like put on like techno or like Britney Spears or something that's like equals my energy level. And actually that can like help me like pour or funnel my already like spastic energy even more. And it helps me work through it, get it out on paper. And then I can kind of relax when I'm done. Sometimes I do the opposite. And if I'm super high strung and relaxed and I can't stop and focus and be inspired, I'll put like really super relaxing, either classical or like yawny or like <laughs> cheesy and yeah, or, or piano music. And then it like helps calm me down first and then I can work on getting creative. So try different music um, and see how that affects your mood. And I find that affects my artwork tremendously in, in any number of di different directions. And that can be really fun. Put a musical on and like sing the whole time. So music is huge for me. Okay, number three, try a new supply. Go to the store. Sometimes, especially if I have a project coming up and I'm like really stuck, um, you know, go to Michael's and like walk through the aisles and be like, ooh, I've never tried this pen before and just grab one thing. It doesn't have to break the bank. Um, but new art supplies, obviously, <laughs> are naturally inspirational. Everybody knows that. But treat yourself to something. Maybe it's like a new stencil or a stamp. Um, on the flip side, try working with something that's super old. I get a huge, um, I am very inspired by like vintage and retro things. I was just at the scrap exchange in Durham and check this out, McCall's, it was a dollar. And it's these, you know, these, what are these called? Um, fabric patterns. 
Um, I love to go into old thrift stores and look at this one. Even just the picture on this is inspirational because those are all hand drawn. Um, it, it literally like drives me, makes me want to go right into my studio and get right to work. Um, you can also pick up, oh my God, look at this one. How funny is that? I mean, get out of here. That just makes me want to go paint something. Um, you can also pick up, um, I just got this at another thrift store, just um, new collage material, right? So I can use this and literally rip it up and just, you know, just say, hey, these are my supplies and that's what I'm going to be using today and just go. All right, so new art supplies. Um, oh, I'm not vain too. Sometimes I also, like I get so overwhelmed because I love mixed media and I like to use like a hundred different things in one project. Sometimes if I really am stuck, I'll do the opposite and I'll say, okay, today I can only use this one thing. This, I don't know why this is even on my desk. It's like a hunk of graphite. And I'll just say, pretend this is the only material in existence and you have to use some, you do something with this. And then I will. Um, so like if you challenge yourself to like a limited palette rather than an unlimited palette, that can be kind of a way to like just to get you out of your funk. Okay, number four, do not start with a blank canvas. There is nothing less inspirational than a blank canvas. A blank canvas to me is like a blank brain. And you have to like come up with like the whole design and the, the composition and your patterns and your color scheme. And it's like, woo, you start off like, I feel like it's like a whole of uninspirationalness. So don't start with a blank canvas. I honestly never do. I used to, I used to buy like high-end fancy canvases. Even when I taught kids, I would not even buy them cheap canvases because I thought like you had to buy everything high quality and blah, blah. And now I'm like discovered that is like the worst way for me anyways to start a project. So what I like to do is, and those of you who follow me know that I'm such a super weirdo about this, but this is why, because if you start with something already, <laughs> sorry, Barry, um, my, my first job in actuality is not to make art from this. It's to cover it up. So, sorry, Barry, right? So I paint on um, record jackets all the time. And again, like all these you can find on YouTube or in my classes. But my first job when I start with a record jacket is to literally, I gotta cover these suckers up. So I don't, I don't start with a plan. I don't, I don't have anything intended. I literally have to start by covering things up. So what do I do? I go and I start ripping up my thrift store paper and I start gluing it down all over my substrate, whether that be in my cereal box journal um, or, or on my record covers or whatever I'm using. But that's why I don't start with blank canvases because they're boring schmoring, okay? So don't do that. <laughs> um, number five, um, use, and this is an obvious one, go to Pinterest, go to Google, you know, Google cool art, right? And find an image that speaks to you, that when you see it, you're like, oh my God, I love that. I wanna try it or, um, you know, there's just something about it that don't do images that you like, find an image that like you love and you want to take a part of it and make it your own, or you want to try to do it exactly, which is fine if you're practicing. Don't do that if you, if your aim is to sell something, cause that's not legal and not right. But if you're just practicing and you're playing and you just want to stay in the creative mode and get your juices flowing, by all means, bang it out exactly as you see it. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do today after I shut up. And this was my image I was looking at yesterday. I was looking at my Pinterest board and I found this and I was like, I love her. I love her. And it's digital art, it's not, it's not even a photograph. But so I'm gonna try to recreate her in my own journal today. Again, I'm not gonna sell her so I feel confident that I can practice and if it ends up being the same, awesome. I always try to make it my own in some way but, um, just so you know, I'm not gonna go off and try to sell that. I will rip off this gorgeous artist, whoever this is. I give them full credit and I appreciate them allowing me to just practice that for my own business. 
Um, and that leads me to my sixth and final point. I don't, I can't, six. <laughs> this is ten. Sixth point, which is give yourself permission to not be perfect. I think sometimes when you're like, okay, I'm going to make something today. It's like all of a sudden your expectations of like making a masterpiece are like off the charts and like that's scary and then all of a sudden you feel uncomfortable and you get insecure and then you get like nervous about your lines being right and I want you to like knock that all off right now just take a deep breath and be like I'm just gonna practice and it's just for me and I don't even have to show this to anyone in the whole world this is just for me and um I think you just need to give yourself permission to do that. And I think I, that took me a long time to do. I used to always like, you know, I didn't want to waste my time making something less than perfect. Well, that's stupid because you're not making, you're not wasting your time. You're practicing and honing your skill. You're practicing your observation skills and your hand-eye coordination and learning to draw what you see and shading and proportions and all this stuff. Every time you sit down and draw or paint something, you're practicing to make yourself better, you know, eventually in the long run. So there's never, it's never wasted time to practice. And the more journals you have going and the more sketchbooks you have, um, the better that you're going to be. So give yourself, always give yourself permission to make mistakes and like just, I always am like, okay, I don't care how this turns out. And those are always, always my best pieces because I truly am relaxed then and can do my best and to get it out. So without further ado, I'm going to shut my mouth and get my own party started today and practice with my, what, what I preach. Um, because I am stressed and I'm not in a good creative place and I have someone actually coming to my house in an hour and 45 minutes and I just spent two hours dropping my kids off at camps and blah, blah, blah. But I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna put on my music. I already have my image. I have my substrate that I'm gonna use. I, for one single dollar, was, again, picked up this 1962 um, storybook which I love it because the pages are matte. Um, there's already illustrations, so there's already color on here. Um, and there's not a lot of pages, so I can fill this up, you know, in a month or two. Um, and I'm going to do my first page. I just bought this, and I just, I'm going to do my first page today. Um, so I have my background, no blank canvas, and I'm going to simply start, and I do this all the time, and I guess you could consider this tip seven, which is open a book, you know, if you want to use, I use recycled cereal boxes to make journals out of. Um, and even just like this first empty page is scary and actually cute. I might, oh, there's like even drawing on it. That's so cute. Um, and I just start by gessoing over the page. That's just, and then I'm kind of ready to begin. So I'm going to do a simple drawing today because this video is supposed to be about 10 minutes and I'm already at 13. I haven't done anything yet. So, um, but that's how I'm going to start. New, upcycled something with a layer of gesso, and then I can begin either collaging, painting, or drawing. Okay, so thank you for listening. I hope that's helpful in some way or another, and I hope you enjoy watching my project. If you have any questions, just pop them in the comments. I'm more than happy to help, and um, 